Here's part two of our conversation with LRB Little River Band founding member, Graham Goble. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. Reminiscing, I, I remember a, like certain Beatle loving that one. To me, the, reminiscing to me, and I know you've heard this before, Graham, but to me, that's like the perfect song. Well, I, I, I've come to see it that way too. I mean, I, I didn't feel that when I wrote it, um, but I, it's not just the perfect song. I think it's a perfect record uh, uh, in terms of every part on that record is just so stunningly original. And it, that song will be around for 500 years. Like it's just so timeless it's um there are certain songs that that, you, that just the planets align somehow um but i've had all i mean as you as you can imagine so much feedback about that song but i i even had some guy years ago he was a um conservatory musician and he said the the chords in reminiscing he said as far as he could see has have never been ever put into a song before that way it changed the intro and then it changes key coming down into the verse he said you must be like did you write it on piano how'd you do this and i said well look no none of that i could just hear that in my head and i just transcribed it onto my guitar it took me like under a half an hour to write it the the lyric the lyric came with the melody and the chord the phrasing all... the phrasing of that even the beginning the beginning, I mean, I'm listening to the phrasing, I'm going, sounds like a guy talking, but the bounce of the phrasing and even going into the chorus, I'm going, how did he come up with that? Well, okay. The inspiration, I, I, I didn't deliberately inspire it, but what about, it's, this was the, the, the bar being set by Cole Porter. So if you think of, of Night and Day. Yeah. Like the beat, beat, beat of the tom-tom, da-da-da-da-da-da-da, with the da 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 That's the one note thing. Brighter night it was later, was walking you home. So I started with brighter night it was later on the one note, but then brighter night it was later, was walking you home. We got down to the gate and I was dreaming of the night. The chord change there. Yeah. It's magical, but that's just what I heard and that's just what happened. But um, and I, and soon as I got that Friday night, it was late thing. And um, like I just, Loved all those black and white movies, you know, Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers, with the, with the lamps walking down the street after the dance, and it's all beautifully lit, and there's a bit of fog around or something like that. That's the whole image of, of my thing, because I wanted to have that life. I never had that life. I never had a girlfriend when I was young. I never experienced what I was seeing in those awesome American movies of the black and white era, and even the when uh, that was that was the life I wanted to have I still want to have it but uh, maybe it's not too late I don't know but but I ne well I never had a prom I never went to the prom I never had had any of all the imagery that's in um reminiscing I have never personally experienced in my life I've never danced with a girl on a dance floor or ever any any of that never but I could put it in the song so I I just let my imagination go, and um, and I think because it is an experience of so many people, particularly in the U.S. and Canada, and that 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 you that that is what goes on in America when you're a teenager, and you have that they're the most wonderful years. So people can relate to it so much, and it's just um, it, it it is a perfect song for so many reasons, and that's why it just goes on and on and on and on, and just I mean every day I just get. My email box is full with people saying how much they love that song and what a companion it's been for their life. It's a wonderful thing. Did you know? I mean, that's a generic question, but when you had, when you were putting it together, did you know there's something here? Did no, no, I, I, I didn't. Um, and even when it was recorded, we recorded it three times. Um, the first twice it didn't work out because it didn't have the right keyboard player on it, but eventually. We've got Peter Jones, who's the most wonderful, who played the Rhodes on the thing, on the song. Um, but when we finished Sleeper Catcher and, and, that, uh, and the album went to Capitol, um, we were waiting for five weeks before we got a call to say, look, we like the album, but there are no singles on it. Could we maybe record something else? And, and then some guy in New York said, look, you guys are crazy. Reminiscing is a smash. That's what you should be putting out. And... They said, well, I don't know. It's a bit, 
the Kaplan was saying that they, they couldn't hear it. So they reluctantly put it out. And of course, it just went ballistic. Um, but it wasn't like, oh, isn't this wonderful? And even we didn't think, well, this is, this is the song we've been waiting for. We didn't, even though we loved the record that we'd made, but we didn't say, well, this is really going to get us going now. But then we followed it up with Lady, which was as big, and in fact, is equally as big with uh, even today on the same record. And so it was just, as I say, planets align. And, but we didn't know. We just were in there re recording. Well, I, I put Lady together for, uh, to forward for four, the first album, all the albums. It got knocked back. Because uh, Glenn didn't really like the song. It wasn't a lyric that he enjoyed. Um, so it was always sort of left off and never got a Guernsey. But then when it came to Slipper Catcher, we had one spot left and I brought Lady again and Glenn said, oh, not again. And luckily the producer agreed to put it on. And Glenn said, look, you know I don't like this song. I said, look, I know, Glenn, but we're, we're bowing down the, the producer. I think it's a pretty good song. So he went out and gave it a shot. And then, of course... That that was massive too. I hear that you shut you shut down the economy, uh, or you sh you had one COVID case and everything shut down. Well, you see, this is the thing that the world needs to consider. This is the best town in the world to live in at the moment, uh, in Melbourne, uh, possibly Adelaide, even ahead ahead of that, where I was, I was born. What we do here is, if there's one case, we just immediately go into lockdown for a few days, and and what happened. It causes a little bit of damage and a bit of, um, well, I'll tell you a funny story, actually. On the day it happened, I had a massage booked with a, with a guy about an hour, about, about a half an hour from here. And the night before, I don't know if you know the tennis player, Pat Cash. He's, a, he's a quite a famous tennis player. So all the tennis players are in Melbourne doing the, the, the Grand Slam at the moment. That They were all locked down in Adelaide and now they're all in Melbourne. Well, he was mixing with them, but there, there was, this one case had mixed with the, all the tennis players. So the whole 450 of them had to, had to be emergency tested before they could start the Australian Open. And one, the, Pat Cash, who was a, uh, I think he won Wimbledon, uh, he visited the night before the very man that's, that's doing my massage uh, uh, on the same day. So he rang and said, because Pat Cash came here, we can't see you. So they checked everyone out, and then the next day he rang, we're all in the clear, now you can come today and have your massage. So we've got contract, contact tracing everywhere, so anyone doing business, they've got to take your details. So if they find somebody who's been connected to someone, who to someone, to someone, to someone, then they can immediately say, well, okay, it got through to me, and I, so I said, okay, fine. So we're just wearing masks indoors now, um, just a, a bit of an inconvenience, but we were locked down for about four months because our, our cases were getting up, nothing like America. Let me start off with the, the Medal of Order of Australia. I must say, man to man, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I was blown away really with this, I mean, but I've been actually blown away with the response to it. It's been extraordinary. Uh, I mean, I've heard from people I haven't seen or had connection with for 50 years and I've had people ringing me, uh, emailing and everyone <laughs> seems so um, so happy about it. So I, I think it's because it's, it's sort of a win for the arts here. There were only I think five people from the arts out of 840 medals that were awarded on Australia Day from on various levels. So yeah it was, it's been amazing and I'm hoping that this will maybe it's the time for something important and maybe it will help me with the musical for for whatever reason i mean i even went to my doctor who's pretty straight laced you know what doctors are like he's an older man and when i finished my um consultation he walked out into the waiting room with all these strangers wait his next patients and he said this guy's just won an oam and i, I was so embarrassed <laughs> I'm sort of hiding like this, and everyone's sort of looking up and whatever. But it's just extraordinary. The for whatever reason, people think you're okay now because you've got an an OAM or something. I don't know. It it seems to mean a lot to society. Whatever. Make sure you comment on our videos and subscribe to our channel. Share our videos and buy a T-shirt. Help support our channel. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. <laughs>